Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back, welcome to all my students. So, this is the third lecture in the 20 hour session for project management and I am sure you know my name, I am Raghunandan Sangupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. So, we were discussing very briefly the concept of agile uh, project management and its features and how it in a very holistic sense considers all the concept of cost, uh, productivity the concept of a budget functionality in, a, in a one go, which is totally different from the concept of pot and CPM. Even though as I mentioned and I mentioned it again, I would, me, I would be doing it time and again, the, the main focus would be from the point of view of the quantitative techniques, which we will pick up as we proceed considering the concept of pot, CPM, JERT, QJERT and so on and so forth. So, for the success of project management, to continue our third uh, lecture in this series. So, we should consider or one should consider that a distinction has to be made between the key performances, which are the indicators of key performances and the su success factors. So, the key performance indicators are the parameters or the indicators or the values that can be measured. So, you have some measuring tools based on which you can measure to evaluate whether project is successful or not from the point of view of the overall concept of what is the success of a project. Is it related to time, is it related to cost or so on and so forth. As a consequence of this, the key performance indicators, so they can be different indicators also for a project, can only be measured after the project is completed and then you basically measure the success of the project. So, if say for example, you have decided to finish the project within 3 months, obviously your time factor is important and which you can only find out once the project is, is over. Obviously, you can take steps in order to finish the project beforehand or right on time if, if there is delays. So, obviously, the cost perspective would come or else if you consider the cost perspective only, perspective only then obviously, the concept of time does not come into the picture, but obviously they can be as I mentioned in the multi objective framework all the concept of perspectives would be taken into consideration that time, functionality, cost, schedules everything is considered at one go. So, the success factors are the conditions of the factors based on which you present a project to be successful. So, whether it is able to meet all the social requirements all the company requirements, all the requirements based on which the marketing strategy was, was started for a particular project, if the marketing strategy was the project as such. So, those are the su success factors based on which the project is decided. Such factors may be observed and, inf and influenced during the project execution phase. So, as the project is going on, obviously, the success factors would be taken into consideration and and studied that how the project is progressing in its overall uh, viewpoint from the point of view of both the, the, the success factors and the key performance indicators based on which we are trying to analyze the project. Project success must be related to some objectives or fixed goals which we already have in mind. So, it cannot be very hazy like means we want to finish a project say for example, some year 3 years down the line is not the way how you basically analyze a project. So, if it is a, is a project which has both social implication, it has both company point of view it is important or say for example, from the government point, point of view it is important obviously, that that uh, framework of time is very important based on which the project will be utilized. Because if there is an overshooting of the time obviously, the cost pers perspective comes into the picture in a very big way with that the overall cost increases manifold such that it has a ne negative implication on the overall success of the project. An interesting question is whether 
there is any difference between the project success and the project management success management success. So, if, if your, your implementation of the project management from the point of view of, of trying to implement the, the quantitative tools is a success. So, you have to study whether the success has been percolating, has percolated to the project uh, phase also. Uh, project success need not be a project management success or vice versa. So, you have to basically analyze this point of view from, from both the perspective. Hence, the question is, can an unsuccessful project be a successfully managed one? So, say for example, you have been able to manage the project in a very, very fantastic manner. Say, say for example, you were a campaigner of a, of a political party and your main project was basically, our idea was basically to win the election. So, obviously, you implemented everything to the best possible extent, the costs were minimized, the overall campaigning was good and so on and so forth. So, the team was able to basically give its best deliverable products, but if the end result the project has been unsuccessful would be would be studied from the point of view whether the election has been won or lost. So, obviously, there has if there is a mismatch between the project management concept and the project as such, obviously, we will try to analyze whether both of them are at diverse ends or they basically give you the same feedback based on which you can analyze the project. So, could an unsuccessful project management also lead to a successful project that has to be studied also, but generally they would be more from the point of, point of view of the qualitative field. So, we will try to basically bring the quantitative and the qualitative into the picture such so that they are able to answer the questions which I have just raised a few minutes back in the slide. A perfect project management organization is no guarantee for a successful project, a, a, a successful project being implemented with its full scope. So, opposite is also may be true would be unsuccessful project management may complete a, a project successfully. So, obviously, this dichotomy between a project and a project management has to be found out in such a way that we are able to find out that what is the basic idea based on which the project was taking into consideration and why this project management was basically taken up in order to implement that project. An example of the later is the oil platform at Stratford, on, uh, in, which is in the North Sea. When it was towed to a field, it was over two years late and at the end, the final cost was almost three times of the first estimated cost. So, say for example, it can be trying to implement one of the, uh, trying to build for the Indian Navy, it can be say for example, trying to build a um, aircraft carrier. So, basically, if the cost is basically much higher, then the project at the end of the, of the day may be success, but the project management point of view, the cost may be very high. So, the project may be that we, the country needs a, a aircraft carrier. So, or say for example, it can be, say for example, we are trying to implement the Tejas aircraft. So, Tejas aircraft may, they has been delays, they had been increased in the cost. So, but if we consider from the point of view of the project and the project management point of view, it may be that the project has been successful because at the end of the day, even after delays, the aircraft has been brought into the picture and it may have been brought into the, the, the implementation of the air force or the armed forces. But if, the, if you consider the, from the cost perspective, the cost may have been very high. So, obviously, the uh, time time lag between the implementation of the project and the project management, there basically gives a picture where there is a mismatch between the concept of a project management and the project which you are going to do. So, as continuing with the example which, which I just mentioned in the slide, the, the oil platform in the North Sea. So, it says that still that platform had performed well, produced oil and generated revenues far beyond what was expected, but there was a delay in initial period. So, obviously, from the project management point of view, it may not have been success, successful, but from the project point of view, in the later years, the returns had been much higher than, ex, than what was really accepted from there. So, as the project model is being deployed in industry, it becomes increasingly important for the team to understand how well an organization is able to handle projects or how the mature the organization is which represents the project management team, team as such. So, say for example, the team may be able to implement a very practical um, uh, project management concept, such that the returns from the project man, 
project as such are positive. That means, risks, risks are very low, profits may be high or the social perspective based on which the project is been implemented is high. But see for example, if the method of implementation of the project management tools are not at all very practical, they may be very nice theoretically, but the end of the day the overall project implementation has been a huge loss uh, point of loss from both from the point of view of the social structure, both from the point of view of the company or maybe from the point of view of the cost structure as such. So, obviously, at the end of the day, the mismatch between the project management concept and the project as such would definitely be there, but you have to basically analyze what is important for you. So, our main aim would be as I mentioned, we will trying to basically learn the tools of the project management, but trying to analyze the success of the, of the project would basically be much more bigger in scope from both the social as well as the team uh, implementation point of view. So, this idea of trying to basically find out the, 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 the less of the dichotomy between the project management and the project is basically referred to as the project management maturity or the organizational pro project management maturities as that there is least divergence between the team which is implementing and the idea based on which is trying to implement the project as such. So, the project organization maturity happens and the points to be considered are the company can obtain an impression of how well it is doing compared to the best practices which are there in the industry. A best practice represents an ind industrially accepted best way of achieving a given goal. So, that, that given goal may not be the so called theoretically the best, it may be the best which is being implemented by industry based on which the company would try to basically implement its project. Benchmarking and the best practice definitions within the manufacturing industry has for a long time been regarded as a good approach to enhance competitiveness as that the project is implemented to the best possible way. So, within project management, project management maturity measurement is a tool to achieve the continuous improvement and organizational learning which would in a way try to basically bridge the gap between the project implementation idea and the project management tools which are being utilized to achieve that goal. So, obviously, if the maturity of the team is, is very low, then obviously, it may mean that the project management concept which are being utilized may have a huge difference between what it aims to achieve and how the project is basically able to be uh, come up in the later stage. But as maturity happens, they have obviously all these points would be taken into consideration. All the points means were ignored or may have been ignored or may not have been considered, may be taken up by the team such that the gap between the project management concept as such and the project project as such are reduced to the maximum possible extent. Measurement of project management maturity will help a company to understand what process influences competitiveness and what processes need further development and improvement such that the gap is reduced. Now, again I am repeating what the gap means is basically the difference between the project management as a concept and project as a concept. So, how the gap can be reduced. Now, one has to analyze that the gap reduction is not the only goal. So, say for example, if my main perspective is the social issues, then our, 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 our concept of cost may take a back seat such that the main focus of social issues is the main gap reduction and the idea between the project management concepts as well as the project which is being implemented using the man project management concept as such. But say for example, this is from the government point of view, say for example, where cost may not be important. But say for example, if it is related to floating a product by a company where the cost is important, so obviously the concept of trying to analyze the project and the project management concepts which are being utilized would only be analyzed from the point of view of cost. So, obviously, there the time, the scheduling, the budgeting would imp be important such that the gap between the project management concept and the project concepts are taken into consideration such that it is implemented to the maximum possible extent considering the cost is important. 
So, thus project management maturity measurements becomes a strategic tool for developing project management competence from, from any, any perspective, maybe marketing, maybe drug design, maybe uh, coming up with a car in the market, maybe trying to basically sell a product uh, by a small company, maybe the government's implementation of social projects like say for example, polio eradication or trying to basically try come up with different social norms for the poor farmers or say for example, trying to basically come up with different schemes for the for young uh, uh, kids for malnutrition. So, all these things may, may, may be considered as the project where in the, uh, in the last three examples which I gave from the government perspective, their cost is important definitely, but their social implications will be much more important. So, say for example, our idea is to build or the government idea is to build schools in one district or say for example, in central India or east India and in south India. So, obviously, the main focus would be how to come up with good schemes as that the idea of trying to send a kid whether a girl or a boy to the, to the school is the main focus of the project. Cost would be important, but the cost would not be considered the main factor based on which the project would be implemented. So, because our main perspective is trying to analyze the maximum number of of people are enrolled or kids are enrolled in the in school and that is a continuous, it happens in a continuous fashion. But as I mentioned in the other example from the from the company perspective, if trying to basically come up with a new fridge or a new refrigerator or a new video or a new television. So, obviously, it would mean that I want to come up in the market with the best product in the least possible number of time such that the cost is the important factor based on which the bottom line of the company may increase. So, in that case, the, the social issues do, do not or may not be considered in the best possible way from the point of view of the company, which is definitely different from how the government basically tries to analyze its problems or its project. For each capability, there is a measurable in unit when you are trying to basically con consider the project organization maturity. This measurement is the basis of the determination of the project organization project maturity. So, for me measurement, the key performance indicators are utilized. So, the key performance indicators for a social um, uh, perspective may be maximum number of enrollment or maybe say for example, you are trying to some, uh, give electricity connection. So, cost is not important, you want to basically have implementation of electricity at different points. So, you will try to basically analyze the, the point of view of the project such that maximum number of households are connected through the electricity grid. Or say for example, if our main perspective is to basically try to have a good irrigation system in the state of Maharashtra. So, obviously, my, my or the government's main perspective would be how to basically have the irrigation system implemented in such a way that the maximum number of farmers do get the benefit of the irrigation new irrigation system which is being implemented as a project. The key performance indicators differ from a success criteria. So, the how you analyze the performance of a project may not be the same as based on which how you are trying to basically collectively an analyze the, the project as such after it is implemented. A success criteria is used to decide whether a goal is met or not, while the key performance indicators would be utilized to basically analyze the overall functioning of the project at different point of, of, of implementation. A key performance indicator is used to indicate the performance of a process as it is going, while the, the success criteria based on which uh, you want to decide would basically B, once you reach the goal, how you are trying to basically analyze the overall project. So, obviously, these one is basically on an ongoing process and on a case by case basis, either on a macro level or on a micro level, and the other is basically after the overall project is implemented using the concept of project management tools, which we would uh, learn as we proceed. So, examples of project organization maturity would be. Apple's creation of a new iPad and the thousands of applications that can be used with either it or their best selling iPod product application. So, obviously, how the, the project organization maturity has happened would definitely give a good feel that how as the team which was implementing the um, um, Apple products 
they came up with different type of KPIs which is um, uh, all these performance indicators, key performance indicators and the su success criteria based on which the projects could be um, analyzed on a macro level or on a mi macro level as the overall project finish. Or the Pectil's con construction of the large scale chemical refining factories in South Africa. So, that can also have uh, uh, end goal based on which we will, we will analyze or the company analyzed its end, end criteria or it can be different type of key performance indicators based on which how the project as it, as it implemented it was analyzed at each and every step. The third example can be the west coast high speed route modernization rail and the renovation project in the UK designed to update the most heavily, heavily traveled passenger and the freight rate work in, in Britain or say for example, it could be the implementation of the different type of rail routes in India. So, our, the government of India's main aim would be basically to have safety and security and trying to basically utilize railways as the best mode of transportation. But in that case as it is doing that, cost would be important, but the cost important factor may not be considered for many of the local trains where increasing in the cost huge impact in the overall project implementation phase because if a project is implemented and at the end of the day people are not going to utilize that obviously its social impact considering this example which I, which I just gave may not have any implication whether it will actually be worthwhile to implement that project. On the other example can be Chile's resource rescue operation for to free 33 miners which, which did happen who, who were trapped in a half mile below the surface following the catastrophic collapse of the mile. So, basically that was taking up a project where the main focus was that the, the all the 33 miners would be, would be, should be rescued. So, obviously any key performance indicators as it pro progressed may have been important at that point of time, but the end result was the rescuing of all the 33 miners. So, that was basically the criteria based on which the pro project was taken up. Or say for example, <coughs> if the project even though those are examples have been discussed by many of the, of the academicians and the practitioners in the past, say for example, if at one point of time India's main aim was, was to basically have its own milk production. So, based on that the project or the idea which uh, Dr. Gurian started for the Amul or the Gujarat cooperative. So, that was basically impl implemented. So, at the end of the day as the project it basically is implemented and it has been going into the process for the last 30 years, we see that the actual aim based on which it was implemented is giving its benefit. So, any key performance indicators in between may have been uh, negative or positive, but the end result of the criteria based on which we are trying to analyze the project is definitely positive. So, obviously, it does not mean that only quantitative techniques would be utilized to analyze a project. The overall scheme of things for the of the project from both the social, the qualitative, quantitative, cost perfect perspective, the budget constraints, everything has to be considered in a very rational manner in order to implement and get the best results from the project. Examples of project organization maturity as we continue would be the subsea installation of a product producing oil and natural gas in the in, in uh, Ormen Lang field in Norway. So, there the, the main focus was basically considering the in, um, very typical weather in, in, in Norway and that uh, area of um, uh, the northern hemisphere. It was basically planned to build up the, the oil field in such a way that the overall drilling of the oil and the transportation of oil could be done in those severe weathers uh, considering the overall cost could also be reduced to the maximum possible extent. Or say for example, if we consider uh, continuing not with the oil, but if we consider the projects of building big ships in the Scandinavian countries, the concept of how the ships were built there and how the ships are built in say for example, in countries like Japan and North Korea uh, or Korea, South Korea are totally different because the in the inclement weather which is there in the Scandinavian countries has a different perspective how the projects are implemented. A world brand project as to consider the next example, a world bank project to reclaim nearly 3 million acres of poor's, poor soil for farming in the Uttar Pradesh state in India was also given uh, as a very good example in many of the books uh, as an example for project organization maturity and how it can be implemented. 
The fifth example can be development of Chevrolet's Volt electric car or see for example, the implementation or trying to basically come up with different type of electric cars either from Toyota perspective or, or Volkswagen perspective. So, this, these can be different type of project where rather than any key performance indicators in between main aim was basically to have a criteria such that you get a, a running car which basically runs on electricity considering the overall cost can be utilized and considering that oil utilization is minimized. So, obviously, as at this point of time, the, the, the scarcity of oil may not be a problem, but say for example, if it is thought that the oil depletion is happening in such a way that it cannot be utilized for running vehicles, then, then obviously the, the idea of having a project with the project management concept of trying to come up with, with a project where the main idea is to develop an electric car really makes sense and that has to be implemented in all schemes. The Android operating system for the smartphones, that concept can is, is also a, a, a very good example for project organization maturity. So, as the thing built up and as Android phones came into the market, the concept of, of utilizing Android phone for different work starting from checking your email to checking your bank account to buying things online, that became a, a, a very very said norm, very co common norm based on which the implementation of trying to come up with an Android phone can be analyzed. And there are different type of, of implications of Android phones starting from using WhatsApp and trying to basically go for video chatting, all these things are now a part and parcel of, of project management. The reef configurations of the Cummins diesel engine assembly lines for streamlining their manufacturing process can, can also be considered another good example for project management uh, maturity. The success of project management basically depends on many factors, but from the agile project management point of view, project success must always be measured against goals and objectives or the criteria based on which you are trying to analyze the goal. So, if your criteria is to reduce the cost, so based on that you will try to basically analyze your, your, your project and the implementation of the project. So, however, there are normally several sets of objectives. So, objectives may be considering collectively, may be reduction of cost, may be social perspective, may be resource constraint, may be budgetary constraints. So, all of these have to be taken into consideration when we are trying to basically find out how good or bad or how successful or unsuccessful the project management implementation has been. So, with this, I will end the third lecture and having said that, in the next uh, three lectures before we start in the seventh or the eighth lecture about the problems, I will try to basically go through quickly as far as possible through the concept of, of project management, agile project management and the related concept. And again, I would request my students who are taking this course to please follow the concept which I, have, which I am teaching through different of the um, textbooks or different articles which are there, mainly the textbooks which I have referred such that they can at least have a feel that what we are trying to co cover in these three lectures and what we are going to do in the future, such that they are much more imbibed and, and, and much more into the course, such that it gives them both the flavor as well as the excitement of the course which we are going to cover in 20 lectures. Thank you very much.